want to begin uh, by uh, again uh, reemphasizing that these are all uh, extensions of the, the transthenoidal approach, which uh, I think everybody is familiar with. And uh, using those endoscopic approaches, you can reach anywhere from the frontal sinus down to the cranial cervical junction. And uh, we're going to uh, show some anatomical exposures of, uh, like, uh, again, the, the, the clivus, which ranges from the cellar area, the upper clivus, the mid to lower clivus, the frame and magnum. And then you're seeing C1 and C2 right here. Um, as, you'll, uh, as you look at the, uh, the cross section here, the central section, you know, notice the hard palate, which is uh, um, uh, sort of your uh, the obstruction to, your, to the inferior limit of how far you aim an endoscope down. Uh, of course, you can use an angled endoscope and look even further down, but uh, straight ahead in the endoscope, there's uh, only so far the nose will let you go. There's only so far down that the heart palate lets you go. Uh, traditionally, uh, approaches to the odontoid were done through the oral cavity, but this required splitting the, uh, the soft palate and the uvula. Uh, and of course, now you can put an endoscope in the oral cavity. We'll, sh we'll see a comparison of how that looks compared to what the cranial cervical junction looks like. Uh, through, the, through the nasal cavity. Uh, so, moving on. Uh, so, again, we're we're mostly going to be concentrating on the midline here, but it's nice to know uh, what's uh, just lateral to the clivus, teacher's apex, clotted, teacher clavel fissure. As you're working endoscopically through the clivus, it's nice to know what's lateral. So, again, here's a, a highlight of the clivus. Uh, the upper part is formed by the sphenoid bone, and the lower part is formed by the occipital bone. There's a synchrondosis between those two. And then uh, laterally, between the sphenoid and the occipital bone, you have the, the petrous temporal bone, which, um, uh, again, joins the, clival, the clivus at this uh, petrous clival fissure that you see right here. And this is where the inferior petrosal sinus runs. So moving forward. Uh, this point here, where all three bones come together, the frame of the it's important to know uh, what's going on there. Here, the quad is leaving its horizontal segment, the petrous temporal bone, and turning upward into its periclival uh, segment in this quad sulcus here, right above the frame of the And so, uh, associated with the upper part of the clivus is uh, this periclival carotid, as we'll see in the next few slides. And also associated with the upper clivus here is this. The cavernous sinus. Uh, so again, upper upper clivus. You know, think cavernous sinus. Think periclival carotid. Uh, as we saw in previous lectures, uh, it's also associated with uh, the cella area. It's essentially the the back wall of the cella. And uh, as we saw in previous lectures, if you uh, go through the pituitary and the stalk, you can get to the interpeductor cistern, the, the basilar apex, third nerve. Uh, above that, the hypothalamus. So uh, we've explored this region a little bit in previous lectures, but again, um, think cavernous sinus, basilar apex, third nerve, uh, and then you go to the, the middle part of the clivus. Uh, now you, you're thinking about the petroclival fissure here, uh, and you're thinking about the middle cranial nerve here, <laughs> and you're thinking about uh, the basilar artery and, and ICA, which is associated with these middle cranial nerves. If you know Roten's rule of three, uh, associating the, the arteries with the nerves. And then finally, the lower clivus, think lower cranial nerves, vertebral arteries, vertebral basilar junction, condyles, the foramen is lateral. So uh, going from the bone to adding the soft tissue back on, um, let's look at a few uh, periclival structures. Again, uh, along the upper clivus, you have the cavernous sinus on either side, like we talked about. The periclival carotid emerging from the petrous apex here, turning superiorly along the clivus, and then finally turning forward towards uh, the carotid siphon, right? Um, <clears throat> then this ligament between the petrous apex and the clivus, Gruber's ligament, which uh, roofs the Rello's canal, the sixth nerve is coming in. We have an sinus inferiorly here. And then uh, posterior. Posteriorly, you have the basilar sinus, which communicates, obviously, with the uh, inferior petrosal sinus and the cavernous sinus. And uh, this bit, uh, venous, there's a venous confluence here. You could, uh, I think people have termed it the periclival venous confluence. 
uh, which is associated with Dorella's Canal, which is um, uh, the combination of Dorella's Canal, the sixth nerve, and, and the confluence of the basilar sinus, the intercostal sinus, the cavernous sinus. Uh, so all of this is uh, paraclival along the, what the, the lateral borders of your, your, your transclival approach that you want to be aware of. Most of the time, again, you're going to be looking from below here endoscopically. So this is the view you'll have. Um, the lower clivus, uh, as you see, is readily accessible. The upper clivus, uh, the uppermost parts, you have to go through the sphenoid sinus cella to get to. Again, so as you see, uh, uh, the hard palate is going to provide a, uh, uh, this is going to contribute to the sort of the inferior limit of how far down you can go. Uh, laterally, your pterygoid processes and your eustachian tubes. And here's a view. If you're just looking straight back in the uh, nasal cavity, uh, you have your eustachian tubes on either side. And already you see that you're not going to go very far laterally towards the condyle uh, unless you manipulate the eustachian tube. Here we've uh, removed some more soft tissue. We see the lower clivus, Raymond and magnum is just right here, uh, the eustachian tube. Here, uh, removing, uh, mobilizing the station tube laterally, we see the condyle, the rectus capsis anterior, crossing over the condylar joint here. So, if you're, for, for example, uh, 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 working on a chordoma here in the lower clivus and you want to chase it over to the condyle, you may have to deal with a eustachian tube in order to uh, get the visualization that you want, or maybe use an angled scope. Again, so you can. Uh, you can follow yourself off midline towards the condyle by just uh, increasing your exposure by mobilizing the eustachian tube. And then you can see even the hypoglossal canal going just above the condyle. Um, so a topic for another day would be going even further laterally uh, and exposing, say, the jugular frame and um, lower cranial nerve. So here we've drilled off uh, the lower part of the clivus. Here is the uh, frame and magnum. And you can see the vertebral arteries, the vertebral basilar junction, the lower basilar uh, in this inferior clival exposure. Uh, again, we're thinking uh, lower cranial nerves when we think inferior clivus. So here are the branches of the hypoglossal nerve, hypoglossal canal, 9, 10, and 11, um, and, and uh, pica. And here's a view of the, the, the lower cranial nerves again, off midline, vertebral. Basler, frame and magnum, condyle. And again, uh, putting the eustachian tube back in place, uh, this is what you see looking directly in. Uh, of course, you can, you can angle your endoscope around to a certain extent. Um, now, we, now, we talked last week about going through the transthenoidal, so I won't belabor all of the, the, the uh, points on this, but uh, suffice it to say, you should be familiar with the the impressions that the pituitary gland makes the carotid arteries, the optic canal, the optical, optical carotid recess, and understand as you remove these layers what you're going to see. So we remove the bone. We see the dura of the pituitary. We see the carotid. Start to see the basilar sinus. Uh, remove more bone, and we see the basilar sinus behind the clivus. And here we see the paraclival carotid, which has just ex exited the petrous apex. And uh, as we've heard about in previous lectures, you follow the Vidian nerve back on either side. It takes you to um, the uh, the inflection point of the carotid, leaving the the, the, the carotid canal, the temporal bone, and entering the paraclival segment, this vertical segment here on either side. So it's real important to be able to, to chase that back. Um, drilling off some more bone, we're seeing... Again, some of the upper and lower clivus at the same time. Again, the middle clivus, you think the basilar artery. Um, you think about the, the middle cranial nerves. Here's the sixth nerve. Again, it has a very vertical orientation, um, and uh, it's uh, probably one of the nerves that's most easily injured doing a transclival approach because of its uh, uh, proximity to the, the dura on either side of the clivus entering the cavernous sinus. So let's zoom in on that just a little bit more. Again, comparing the lower the lower clival exposure you can get with uh, eustachian tubes uh, retracted versus eustachian tubes in place. Um, 
Again, going from top to bottom, you have your pituitary, your cavernous sinus that's accessible. There's the third nerve in the basilar apex, uh, the posterior cerebral artery, the superior cerebellar artery. So uh, these are all structures of the upper clivus uh, from an endoscopic perspective. And then from uh, for the middle clivus, you know, we have the, the basilar artery proper. The, the six nerves are running through that middle clivus segment and their cisternal segment, and then they enter the cavernous sinus and dorellos canal uh, laterally as they approach the upper part of the clivus. And then you have your, your, your seven and eight complex here in that middle part of the clivus. Here's the seven, eight complex here highlighted. Like, uh, and again, lower clivus, vertebral arteries, vertebral vascular junction, lower cranial nerves, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And then let's look at the frame and magnum. Uh, uh, so uh, we can go below the frame and magnum and expose the dantoid. So this is the view through the traditional transoral approach. You have your uvula, you have your soft palate, the tongue, your special retractors made to expose this area. Again, but in order, in order to do this the traditional way, you often had to cut the soft palate and uvula and reconstruct it, and you know that had that could interfere with their ability to uh, easily eat and swallow post-op compared to the, the nasal approach that we now use. You have to go through the pharyngeal constrictor muscle here. You're going transoral. So uh, again, uh, you're looking here at the sort of C12 junction, the rectus capitis, uh, longus capitis, longus coli. And we'll take these layers down one by one. Uh, here you see, again, that longus coli muscle, the C1 arch, the anterior arch of C1. You retract the muscles. You can see the body of, of C2. Here's the arch of C1, again, from the transoral approach. And through the transoral approach, once you take the uh, ring of C1 off, you can see the odontoid process. It's sort of a steep a uh, foreshortened uh, view coming from a transoral approach. You're really looking up uh, compared to the uh, endoscopic approach where you're looking uh, more straight on. Your alar ligaments on either side, your transverse ligament, uh, apical ligament. Obviously, if you're taking the dantoid out, you're going to need to do some sort of stabilization procedure posteriorly afterwards. Here's the straight on view through a trans uh, nasal endoscopic view. You see it's more sort of straight on to the dantoid, and during your dantoid activity, you'd want to Maybe core out like this, go out the cantellus bone, and then finish off with the cortical bone. Um, looking from a transoral approach, you're looking up. Again, everything's foreshortened here compared to the straight on view that you get through a transnasal approach. And here are all those ligaments. There's the base of the, the dontoid after it's been removed, looking down from the endonasal. The, um, the transverse ligament, alar ligament. Again, uh, the cruciate ligament, which includes the apical ligament as well, and below. And then once you remove that, you have uh, a tectorial membrane here, uh, which is just in front of the dura. You can open the dura and get uh, this view of the, the medulla. Again, this is looking uh, from below. You're looking up or from the endonasal approach and straight on. Um, so uh, different perspectives, transural, trans nasal endoscopic. Uh, these days, it seems that most of the uh, work uh, for dotoid problems can be addressed endonasally rather than transoral uh, endoscopic, but both of them are options. And